dear viewers, action game aficionados, RPG fans of all shapes and sizes, and most importantly of all, fans of the titular Falcom Company. I come today bearing great tidings, as thanks to the good graces of my dear friend Peyton, or Final Hearts as some of you may know him as, ended up gifting me one of Falcom's most overlooked and underrated games of all time. And after beating it, I decide its word needed to be spread. I needed to sing the gospel of this title so that more people could possibly play it. So sit back, kick your feet up, grab a slice of delicious shortcake, and let me tell you what was so damn good about Guruman, a monstrous adventure. Gonna get into my praises real nice here and start off by talking about just how much I love this game's style as it genuinely feels different from many other Falcon games. Most Falcon titles have this kind of high energy feel to them that feels like you're going on a big adventure, while Guruman, on the other hand, has a more cutesy, almost whimsical feel to its design. It has the kind of energy you would see in something like Kirby right back at you or some obscure anime in the 2000s, where you're waking up early on a Saturday morning in order to catch the latest episode with a nice bowl of Cheerios. I preferred Honey Nut. What about you? Did you prefer Honey Nut? You probably did. Anyways. It gives you this nostalgic kind of feeling that honestly puts a smile on my face whenever I enter a new area and see what awaits me on the next journey. Of course, this wasn't the only thing that made me grin in such a goofy way, as the gameplay was also incredibly entertaining. Now, Gurman is an action RPG platformer, so it's a lot of traveling through individual levels using simple but satisfying ground and aerial combos, along with a nice dodge roll option. It's simple but satisfying, kind of like McDonald's. But that doesn't mean that's all there is to the combat as there were other facets. For one, you could actually increase the powers and skills of your weapon by adding special elemental properties through special parts you unlock throughout the world to your drill. Yeah, you use a drill instead of a sword, which I actually really like as it gives the game a bit more of a personality than just giving us generic Sword of Legend 47-C. And since it's a drill, you can actually outfit it with parts you buy from, uh, well, let's just say if he had to pick a chord, it would be a minor. What the fuck? So your weird ass was trying to get head from a little kid? Relax, Naruto. We already got him cornered, so he's not a threat right now. Nah, fuck that shit! This nigga is a fucking pedophile! Of course, that isn't all, as you also have drill power. A gauge that you fill by defeating enemies or by interacting with several of the dig spots on the map. Filling it up increases your drill level which grants you more damage with your combos the higher up it goes. But be warned, you can lose those levels by constantly taking damage from enemies, which makes it a good incentive to learn enemy patterns so you can avoid them as best you can. And honestly, I think I like this a lot better than just it going down slowly over time. I've always never really liked that mechanic as it always felt like an unfair punishment. Instead of something like this where you get hurt, hey, it's because you didn't learn how to play the game. That's always much better in my opinion. Do better, please. And finally, you have the most unique aspect of the game, and that's the rhythm mechanic, where another bar up on the top of the screen has constantly moving rhythm beats, and matching the beat to your attacks can net you critical hits each time you land a strike, which can really get you to master the timing for the best damage possible. And hey, if you don't like it, you can just straight up ignore it in favor of just playing the game normally. Pretty dope in my opinion. And that's pretty much it for gameplay, so let's get into the story and characters next. They're fine. To be honest, the game is rather light on both of those. It's a pretty simple premise, honestly. Parin is a young girl who has to go live with her grandparents after her mom and dad get called overseas for an excavation trip, and is bummed to learn that there's pretty much no one to hang out with. That is, until she ends up helping a little girl who turns out to be a monster instead of a human, and the monster invites her to hang out with her and her friends in their world, and for a while everything is pretty much fine, until the main antagonist, known as the Phantom, start wrecking shit in the village. As such, Parin is told about the legend of the human and monster that teamed up to defeat the dragon of old. And now Parn must wield the Drill of Legend to defeat the Phantoms and help restore Monster Village. And that's pretty much it. There's some added lore later about the Prince not actually being the Prince, his real goal being revenge, along with the fact that it's revealed that Parn's grandfather was the one who teamed up with the monster to defeat the Dragon of Old, which is kind of neat. But honestly, yeah, that's all you're getting in terms of story. But that's not exactly a bad thing. It's a simple, easy to follow story with charming worlds and gameplay. You go from level to level, beat the levels and bosses and save the day. That's it. Simple but effective, I say. It's also helped by how much there is to unlock in this game. The amount of unlockables is crazy. 
There's several game modes, a bunch of costumes, hell, even a boss rush. It's honestly amazing how much there is on such a small game. And this is all accompanied by, of course, a fantastic sounding soundtrack. Is that repetitive? I don't care. It has this whimsical high energy bop fest that really gets you in the mood to beat some enemies into paste. And with that said, that's pretty much it for my pros. So it's time to get into the cons. Alrighty, so we've said our praises for this game. Let's get into cons. But when it comes to reviewing something like Guruman, cons aren't really super easy to find. It's a fairly short game that wraps up before anything can really overstay its welcome. But even so, I did end up having a few complaints. And they were mostly about gameplay. For one, levels could be kind of confusing. It didn't happen super often, sure, but there would be certain moments like in the forest areas where you would just get turned around and everything just looking the same. Like there was this one level in the forest section where I couldn't find the switch because it blended into the background. So I spent like 10 minutes longer than I needed to looking for it. Other than that, the only other gameplay issue is with a few boss fights. Now for about 90% of the game, the bosses are fine. Some like the cream boss fight stand out as massive highlights of the game where it turns into this crazy 3v1 brawl and it's super fucking hype. The only two bosses that I personally thought were pretty bad were the final ones of the game. The battle with the prince and the battle with the dragon of legend. They both suffer from actually the exact same problem. See, while the bosses themselves possess a lot of unique movesets that are rather fun to dodge and weave around, they also suffer from what I like to call Elden Beast Syndrome, where the fight itself is really cool, but it's held back immensely by the fact that a good portion of the battle is dedicated to just chasing them around the arena. And while you can use a special technique spam to deal with Tokoron, which is the name of the dragon, I probably should have mentioned that, that isn't the case with the prince, though, so get ready for one of the most tedious fights in the game. Outside of that, every other boss fight is pretty much great. And that's really it for my complaints on gameplay. I know some people said they had problems with cameras, but I never really had a huge issue with it. Now with that taken care of, let's get into the other cons. Now the only other issue with this game are going to be much more on the subjective side, and that's the voice acting, cutscenes, and characters. These are pretty rough around the edges, which is indicative of games with a budget outside of the characters, but we'll get to those in a second. Now personally, I think these are rather charming. It's the same kind of vein of watching some old Godzilla movies for their cheesy acting and lip syncing. However, I know there are people that cannot stand those kinds of things. So if that pisses you off, this is going to piss you off, as the game is filled to the brim with it. And last but not least, the characters aren't really all that interesting. I like Parin and her monster friends, sure, but I see them more in the same vein I see a cast from Altier Mary. They're enjoyable, but they don't really stick in your mind a whole lot. Kind of like a Whopper from Burger King, or a Chili Cheese Burrito from Taco Bell. I've made a lot of food analogies, I shouldn't make these videos when I'm hungry. Other than that though, that's pretty much it in terms of cons. So let's get into my final thoughts. So we're finally at the end. A much shorter review for this title than what I'm certain a lot of you are used to by now, but to be honest, I think that kind of actually helps sum up what Guruman truly is. A short, yet charming experience that is hopefully worth coming back to again and again. Is it perfect? No, but good god is it entertaining. And to cap off the video, instead of doing my usual rating and then the whole like and sub routine, I actually have a small request for you all who made it to the end. Please, if you can, spread the word about Guruman and show it some love. It's dirt cheap on Steam and even cheaper thanks to sales, going as low as $3 at times. So do me a solid and help get the word out about it. It can be by buying it yourself, making this video get a lot of likes so it goes viral, or even just telling someone online or in the real world about Guruman. This game, it deserves so much more attention from the Falcon fanbase, and unlike other spinoffs, it doesn't really have the backing from being part of Yeast or Trails. So I can only pray that this video helped convince you to give it the help it deserves. This title has genuine potential that deserves to get a lot more traction, and I hope I can convince at least even one person to try the series. That's all folks. Have a lovely day, and I will see you next time for more RPG content.